What's going on guys, it's your boy DPJ here today with another Destiny video and in today's Destiny video we're going to go through the latest patch, the 1.2.0 patch. It is now live after a few days of waiting and it offers so much new shit, it is unbelievable and we're going to go through the complete update in a second. But one thing I think they kept quiet is they're reintroducing the Queen and she's back in the tower right now. The Queen's emissary as you can see uh, across from where the Iron Banner is, she's right there. Now she offers six bounties, three of which you can pick now. Uh, which I've already picked up, which are the first three, and then we've got these one available day four, day five, and day six. She also has two emblems, which she had before the Queen's Guard Crest and the Crown of the Sovereign, and the two shaders as well the rose gold and the prism dancer rose gold i had from last time and i've kept it but prism dancer i don't think i picked up which i'm definitely going to get now i really am but yep the queen's emissary is back in the tower uh six bounties the first one hunt drevis wolf baroness near the cosmic drawings forgotten shore second one hunt calyx 12 in the cosmic drawings skywatch and the third hunt peakis the disavowed in the citadel on venus four fifth and sixth ain't available yet uh, like it says available day four day five and day six i'm guessing since we can pick uh, day one day two and day three today day four day five and day six will be tomorrow just guessing i'm not sure to be honest but yeah the queen's emissary is back in the tower if you didn't quite know now there's a lot of things that have come with the update and we're just going to get straight into it starting with weapons fixed an issue in which the vex mythol class was not respawning with primary ammunition fixed an issue with the hive disruptor perk which now appears in the black hammer perks that again fixed an issue in which the phantom gift and white nail perks would become interrupted when non-precision damage occurred from other perks bonus damage from other perks explosive rounds hive disruptor no longer interrupt the count three precision hits within the time window will trigger the intended refund bonus fixed an issue in which the hive disruptor perk did not work correctly with sustained damage events auto rifles and pulse rifles etc oracle disruptor perk now triggers more often hive disruptor perk now triggers more often but does less damage per event pvp and salvage move the first relic to more consistently appear in a centralized position on the map and fixed an issue that caused players to wait an excessively long time to respawn that literally pissed me off so much it was unbelievable when you're in pvp and you just couldn't respawn ah, i hated it i really did okay moving on to the tower faction reward packages will no longer produce shards yes Yes! Replace them with weapons! Uh, the speaker will now exchange Ascendant and Radiant Materials for Glimmer and Morts of Light. Epic! Zer will now exchange Strange Coins for Morts of Light. That is amazing! Commendations are no longer required to purchase gear. We already know this. Commendations can now be converted to receive 250 XP gains in Vanguard Crucible and Faction Reputation. Note, a favorite light will not be made available for ascending gear until the release of House of Wolves. Yeah, that was obvious. User interface, vendor interaction panel has now been updated to support quest chains. Vendor interaction panel now has better animations and fewer popping issues. Number of buffs that can be displayed on a character screen has now been increased. Inventory item stacks that have reached their highest possible count will now display gold numbers along with an alert in the tooltip that maximum quantities have been acquired. Audio added improved feedback for players who take damage from enemy weapons. Companion fixed an issue in which the Mercury Grimoire card was not being awarded. Retroactively awarded the Mercury Grimoire card to players who have found the Mercury Memory Fragment Dead Ghost. Vendor items, damage types and perks will now be visible on Bungie.net and the mobile app. Technical addressed a crash on Xbox One that was induced when too many explosions, projectiles were generated. Never actually had that issue. Fixed an issue that affected the network quality user interface. Indicators will no longer display persistently bad red quality after a user's connection recovers from a temporary quality issue. The quality indicators should now always correctly reflect a user's live connection quality. And then dumb. We have discovered that legendary engrams will drop in the 1.2.0 that the cryptarchs will not recognize. Hold on to all newly acquired purple engrams until May 19th to benefit from their upgraded decryption skill set. So basically if you get a legendary engram now and a cryptarch does not recognize it, keep it until May 19th and you'll get something new out of it. Simple as that. Okay, in this update they also talk about the hotfix that will come with uh, House of Wolves, the 1.2.0.1. I'm going to go through this, I may as well. 
Okay, starting with PvP, added a new daily reward package upon completion of the first game in the Daily Feature Crucible playlist, Epic. Added passage coins to reward streams across all playlists, including the daily reward package. Passage coins are for the Trials of Osiris, by the way. Increased Crucible mark drop rate across all playlists by 100%, Epic. Increased Crucible reputation earnings across all playlists by 100%, even Epica. <laughs> Increased rare weapons and gear drop chance for completing games across all playlists by 100%. Amazing. Added legendary weapon drops into the Crucible reward system across all playlists. Epic. Added Dark Below maps into all Crucible playlists for all players to enjoy. And that will be Pantheon, The Cauldron and Sky Shock. Amazing. Now Iron Banner adjusted the power curve in the Iron Banner playlist to accommodate the competitive range of power in the House of Wolves. Across one Iron Banner event, players competing in Iron Banner with more than one character on the same account will receive a reputation boost for the lower ranked characters to reach parity with the higher ranked character more quickly. Epic. Six additional Iron Banner bounties have been added to the bounty rotation. Amazing. Remove the errant buff from the Iron Banner control playlist. Etheric Light will now be available at rank 3 and 5 in the Iron Banner. Great. The Tower, the Cryptop will no longer convert legendary engrams into shards. Amazing. Possibilities include gear and weapons or exotics. That is epic. That is. I'm so sick and tired of getting shards out of legendary engrams. Daily Heroics will produce Morts of Light in lieu of shards. Ascending, Year 1 Legendary and Exotic Gear can be upgraded to the highest power levels available in Year 1. We know that. Basically, ascending them to a 365. User interface, the control UI above the mini scoreboard has been fixed and returned to the player's HUD. Technical, added a new correction recovery system. Specific player networking problems will now be fixed instead of kicking affected players to orbit. This will be enabled first for Trials of Osiris and rolled out to other activities over time. But yeah, all in all, it sounds like a pretty beastly update that we've got with the 1.2.0 and the hotfix that comes with the House of Wolves on May 19th. And I'm so glad that some of these things here are so amazing, it's unbelievable. Especially, no more fucking shards from packages, uh, no more shards from engrams, 100% rep and mark boost for Crucible, that's epic as well. But guys, what do you think about this update? Tell me down below in that comment section. Thanks for stopping by as always, and peace out until next time. Peace!